In today's video, I'm going to cover all the built-in functions for working with lists in Python. I'm hoping to simplify everything and speed up your workflow so by the end of this video, you can use these in your code. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back guys for another episode of Code with Josh. For obvious reasons, I'm Josh and I'm stoked to have you guys here. Before I dive into today's video, do me a favor, help me out, hit that like button and subscribe. That really does help my channel reach more people around the world and it helps me in the crazy YouTube algorithm. So if you get value, hit that like button. Today's video, I am breaking down and covering all the built-in functions and methods that we use for working with lists in Python. This is going to simplify how you work with lists and I'm hoping it's going to optimize your workflow as well. You're probably already using a bunch of these, but other ones you're not utilizing how you should be. And I'm going to show you guys real world code examples to help walk you through this. Guys, the first link in the description, that's my weekly Python newsletter where I write about topics requested by you guys to help break it all down. So come down and join in on all the action and all the fun in my Python newsletter. First link in the description. All the other links are available to you guys for free to help you in your Python journey. Now, let's check out all these list methods that I've been talking about. All right, here we are guys, in no particular order at all. I'm gonna cover all the list methods so you guys know how to use them today. Let's get started. So, here's my list. It's called my list. It has five elements inside. They're all integer values, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's start with the first one that we should know, okay? I'm gonna take my list and we are going to append. For example, I'm gonna append the number 10, okay? I'm gonna come down here and I'm just gonna keep a print so I can always just print my list off and run your code. Append in English just means to add. So anytime we wanna add an element. Now, this is going to be added onto the end of your list. I'm gonna show you guys very soon how you can insert it wherever you want. Guys, use the timestamps below to track where you wanna be in case you already know some of these methods. Okay, there we go. There's my new list with 10. Okay, next up, if I already have a list and I wanna reset the list without creating a new one, Okay, um, I can really just take my list and I can say clear. Okay, clear is a function for working with our lists, which allow us to do just that. And now when I print off my list, because we've said clear, I didn't create a new list. I just deleted all the elements from the list by using clear. There we go. There's our empty list. Now, if I already have a list and I want to be like a uh, copy list, Okay, I could create a new list from this by taking my list and just saying copy. What this does is now I'm gonna have two lists. I'll just do this side by side for you guys. We will do copy list and my list. And now I'm gonna see identical values. With this new copy list, you can treat it exactly like a new list. So for example, if I come down here now and I say copy list append, 10, run your code, voila. You can see now the copy list is treated as its own and we are appending 10, pretty cool. Okay, now for the next one, let's say I have a list and let's say I'm gonna put like uh, a bunch of threes, twos, one, 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 five. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have some duplicate values in there. So really the next one is allowing us to count the number of occurrences. How many ones are in my list? Well, unless you're sitting there counting, one, two, three. Okay, it's gonna take you a minute. If we just say, I'm gonna create a variable and I'm gonna say uh, one, let's just say one is equal to my list, I want to count. What do I wanna count? I wanna count the occurrences of the number one. If I come here and I now print one, let's see how many ones are in your list. There we go, there are five ones in this list. Using count allows you to count the number of occurrences of that specified element. Okay, so here we have our existing list. Now, imagine I wanna add multiple elements into this list at the same time, or I wanna add another list completely, right? All we need to do is we need to take your list and we need to extend. Okay, what are you extending onto the end of the, of the list? Let's just say six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Okay, so now our list has this extension to it. 
And I think you can guess what's going to happen here. When I run this, we're going to see a much longer list by extending our current set. Voila. Okay, we have a new list. I can add multiple elements at the same time of any type of iterable to this list. Next up, imagine we have our list and I want to get the position of something that's in my list. Okay, so for example, I can see this list, but let's say I wanted to get the position of number four. If I really create a variable here, I'll call it pause for position, my list, I can say index, right? What do I want to index? What do I want to find the position of? I'm going to say I want to find where four is at inside my list. Okay, if I print off position now, you can see I'm, I'm, I'm given the index of three. You can see that I'm given the index of three, right? Because zero, one, two, three. Four is resting at position or index of three. So index allows you to find the position of something. I've changed up my list now and I have one, two, four, five. What number am I missing? Three. Right now, typically, if we say my list, we would be like append three. But what's the problem with this? That's going to go on to the end of your list. We don't want to do that. Python has a method called insert. This allows you to be very specific. OK, and I can insert an item into my list exactly where I want it. The first argument I give it is what position. So zero, one, two. I want to put this at the second position. What do I want to put there? A three. That's pretty much it. If I come here now and I take my list, I have inserted a new element into it and I have put the number three at position two. There's our output for that list. One, two, three, four, five. Knowing that we have our list, we've covered all different ways to add items to the list, count the number of occurrences, or even index a list. But what if we want to remove or delete items? Well, there's two ways to do this. Okay, the first way is I could say my list I want to remove. Now inside remove, you specify the item you want to remove. For example, five. I want to remove all the fives from my list or the five occurrence of my list. If I come down here, you're going to be given a new list and I'm just going to put this here without running it for now. Okay, you're going to be given a new list that's going to look something like this. In fact, let me change this to make my example better. Let's say two. Okay, so two is going to go away now. Here is my list, right? Now, we have another method though. So I have remove where I need to specify exactly what I want to remove. Our other method that we could have, remember this is my updated list now, is I could take my list and I could say pop. Okay, pop is great. If I leave pop empty right now, this is going to pop off the last element of your list. So if I drop that down there, at this case, it's going to be a five. It's going to pop that off. But we can also specify an argument in here. So if I leave pop empty, it's automatically the last element of the list. But coming down here, if I said I want to pop one. Zero, one. It's going to pop whatever is at that first index for us. So our list is ultimately formed to look something like this. Let's run our code. I have two ways of removing elements. Remove, let's specify what we want to remove. Pop, I can either pop the last element off at the end, or I can specify the index that I want to pop off. There we go. One, two, three are three different lists. Next up, we have our list that I want to reverse the direction of. So if I wanted to make a reverse direction of this, I could take my list and I could just say reverse. That's really it. Now, this is altering the state of the existing list. Okay, so it's not creating a new list. If I wanted to make a new list, I could be like x equals reversed the function, giving it my list. That's going to create an entirely new list. The method is altering the state of the original list. Okay, so if we come here to check, I'm going to check and I'm just going to say my list, run your code. Voila, I have my list that's been reversed. 
This brings me to my last two. So the last two is going to be how can I organize my list? So more specifically, right, this should be two, five, four, let's just, there we go. Okay, a randomized list. Um, if I take my list, we can use the sort method. Now, if you leave this empty, it's automatically going to sort the list um, from least to greatest. And if you're working with any letters or strings, it's going to go A through Z organizing that list out for you. Okay. Now, previously, I used the reverse method to reverse the list. I could even drop in here. I could say reverse equals true. And I could do that the same way right here, right? Now I've reversed it and it's also sorted. Pretty cool, right? So we have this list. Let's create a string list. And let's just say here, I want to put countries. Let's say uh, Japan. Let's say uh, Germany. Let's say, um, oh, I don't know, Canada. And finally, let's put a long one. Let's say Indonesia. Okay, cool. So I have a list of strings. I'm going to turn off my numbers. Um, now we also have sort for this, but this time I can actually give it a key. What do I want to sort by? The length. I want to sort by the length of the elements in my list. So if I drop in here my string list, let's even swap this out to our string list. Now, when I run this, it should be in order from, there we go, least all the way to greatest. And you can see that the two that got swapped are Canada and Germany. Well, guys, that's all for this week's episode of Code with Josh. I hope you guys got value and I hope I covered some new functions you can use right now to get started with lists. If I did, drop a comment, let me know your thoughts, and hit that like button. That really helps out the video. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing. That helps out the channel. Well, guys, until next week's episode of Code with Josh, I'll see you then.